The key to a great bass tone always comes from your fingers. So sure, you know, your bass amp, your action, what strings you're using, your bass, these all make a difference, but the biggest single difference you can make to improve your bass tone is to work on your plucking hand. In most cases, just these two fingers. If you also want to be playing accurately and with speed, then again, you need to look at your plucking hand. In this video, I'm going to show you three plucking techniques that you can use to massively improve your bass tone and your efficiency on the bass. Make sure you watch this lesson to the end because I'm going to be giving you some exercises that you can take away to work on your plucking technique. So you can download those exercises on the PDF below this video, the link's there, it's in standard notation and tab. And also remember to subscribe to my channel, Greg Space Shed, here on YouTube by pressing the red subscribe button and click the notification bell. The first technique I'm going to talk about is what part of your fingers you use. Now you need to use the pads of your fingers here, the pads here to get a really fat sound. So I see a lot of students kind of plucking just outwards, um, which means they're using the tips of their fingers. So the same technique as you'd use if you did a kind of pop, a slap pop, you're gonna pop out. So I see some people kind of plucking like, like that. But you need to think about using the pads of your fingers and really stroking the strings. So you go towards you, basically. So you're going to come that way, so stroking the strings. So just try that on the D. So it helps if you think about straightening your fingers a bit. Uh, obviously you have to have some bend in there when you're plucking, but just don't have them kind of like that. So you kind of think that kind of position. So use stroking the strings with the pads of your fingers. Now if you don't do this, it's fine. If you're playing at home, you can kind of get a fairly decent sound. But when you play through a rig, through your amp, through a PA, then all your sounds are magnified massively. So if you've got a kind of quite a weak sound, then that will be really apparent. And you really need as a bass player to be the solid bottom end. Um, so you want the fattest, roundest sound possible. So what I'm gonna do, if I'll just play, um, just play an A. So that's using the pads of my fingers. So have a listen and I'll alternate and I'll go on to just plucking the way you don't want to do. Uh, you really need headphones or speakers to hear this properly. But So this is the pads of the fingers. And this is if I pluck. And then the pads. So you can hear there's a much bigger sound there. I'm going to give you some exercises to help with this. But for now, just try with, say, um, fretting at the fifth fret and just slowly Try to use the pads of your fingers and then move on to the A string and then the D string. move on to the second plucking technique which is the use of alternate plucking. Now if you don't know what this is it just means that you alternate between your first and second finger in your plucking hand. Um, occasionally people use three fingers even more probably um, but now for now just focus on just using two fingers so alternating one and two. Some of you might have heard of alternate plucking um, but really struggle to get it into your playing. Now a really handy tip here is to video yourself and have a look back because some of you think you might be doing it and you have a look back at the video and realize actually now I'm just using one finger. Um, so what you really need to do is use exercises and I'll show you some in a minute to um, really work on this because it's hard to work on it if you're playing a bass line and you're focusing what you're doing in your left hand. So you really need to kind of strip it back with exercises but definitely video yourself and have a look. In some situations you might just want to use one finger if you're playing a kind of rock groove. If you're laying a kind of slow groove. You might kind of want that really fat sound and that's fine, but if you're ever gonna to wanna to play faster then you need to work on this now because it will hold you back in the future if you don't do alternate plucking. So for example, um, this riff here. So that's the main riff to Come On Come Over by Jacko. So you'd really struggle to play that if you just used one finger in your plucking hand. Now a lot of confusion arises about 
what finger you use first. I get a lot of students and I'm not sure what combination of fingers do I start on my first finger, second finger. And there isn't a hard and fast rule. Generally, if I start a phrase or group of notes, I'll start with my first finger. But sometimes this isn't possible. If you play groups of three or odd groups, then you're going to start the next group with your second finger. Okay, so if you just do on an A, so you should do group of three, one, two, three, and then the next three, one, two, three. So you're going to be doing one, two, one, and then two, one, two. Okay, and when you start crossing strings, um, you're going to be on different fingers. It doesn't matter. You've just got to work out what works for you and what's the most economical. And that kind of leads to the third technique, which is a rake. Now, a rake is just when you play the string and then you play the next one with the same finger. This only works when you're playing the strings going towards you, so you're going to the lower strings. So, for example, if I just play a G, the fifth fret of the D string, and then I play a D, the fifth fret of the A string, if you look at my right hand here, so you just use the same finger. Now, this becomes really important when you're playing faster phrases because it makes your playing a lot more economical and efficient. Now, again, it's up to you when you decide to use these rakes. Um, just work them in yourself and see what really works and what feels good. A situation where you might want to use a rake is the bass line from Mojo Hanna. So it's like this. I'll play it fast first of all, then I'll show you. So. Okay, so that riff there. That's just a pentatonic backwards, an F major pentatonic. If we do it from F, we could even go two octaves. Okay, so it's that shape there. So backwards. And what I'm doing, I'm doing with my right hand, one, two, one, rake, two, rake, one, one, okay? So one, two, one, rake, two, rake, one, one. Okay? And it really helps to play that riff quickly. I'm now going to show you four exercises that you can use to work on these three plucking techniques. Remember that you can get the exercises below on the PDF, so in standard notation and tab, you just click the link. And also, if you're really interested in working on different aspects of your bass technique, then you might want to check out my book, Warm Up Exercises for Bass Players. Now, you can get that in digital or printed version. So if you want to check that out, then there's a link below with the PDF or head straight to my website, gbshed.com and look on the books tab and you'll find more details there. This first exercise is relatively simple and it's just to get you using the pads of your fingers and to start using alternate plucking. So for the second and third note, you need to use one and two in your plucking hand. You can also use left hand muting to help with these open strings or when you're playing a note, you can play the note and if you've got a rest, just rest your finger back on the note with your plucking hand. So you can use a combination of both those um, muting techniques just to get a really clean sound. The second exercise is just exercise one taken up a notch. So we're introducing 16th notes and we've got like a higher note, an octave higher. So there's a few positions that you can play this exercise, but watch me play it. And again, really focus on using the pads of your fingers and alternate plucking. The third exercise uses a major arpeggio. So in A, we've got root, third, fifth, octave. Okay, so it uses that pattern. And in the second and fourth bar, we've got triplets, groups of three notes. So we're going to start the first group with our first finger in our plucking hand, the second group with our second finger. So we're going to kind of go one, two, one, two, one, two, one, two, one, two, one, two. So it will get you used to doing that and um, swapping strings. Just repeat. 
repeat that again, etc. So you can repeat all these exercises round and round. And again, it really doesn't matter what speed you play them at. You can play them really slowly. You'll get as much use out of them playing them slowly. This fourth bass line is based on the bass line from Mojo Hanna that I showed you with the pentatonics. So you've got the bass line in F, then G, and then A. So you just need to know the pentatonics and these shapes. Okay, and you really need to use rakes to play this exercise to full speed. And it really doesn't matter if you play this very, very slowly. So you could just do. Or just practice that run first. Okay, just to make sure you're getting the rakes and the alternate plucking in. Well, that's the four exercises in the lesson. Remember, you can get all the exercises on the PDF. And don't forget to subscribe to my channel here on YouTube by pressing the red subscribe button. And if you click the notification bell, you'll be notified when any of my new lessons come out. Please let me know how you got on with the lesson. If you found anything tricky, um, what you want to work on now, just let me know how you're getting on with your playing. If you've got any questions, just leave any of that in the comments below. I always check those. And if you feel that you've got some good value out of this lesson and you want to, you can buy me a coffee using the link below. Check out my website, gbshed.com, if you want to look at some more bass resources. And I'll see you very soon in the next lesson. This is Greg from Greg's Bass Shed.